Why it takes so long for you to load into Halo Infinite, how we could possibly be getting some modded maps for Halo 3 and some HDS settings of like things changing quite a bit and a whole lot more. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. I'm sure all of us have sat around looking at this screen going, just load. Why is this taking so long to load? But well, we actually finally got some answers why that is. Friend of the show, Halo.API responded to this saying, because the game is fetching thousands of assets first, then the battle pass, then the challenges, which was kind of my assumption when it came to the whole thing, because they have to just load in all the different assets that are coming to the game. This is actually an issue that I brought up in a previous video as well, when I was talking about why I'm concerned about Halo Infinite. My big, one of my biggest concerns is the file size of the game, as we're continually adding in more content, right? And none of the Battle Pass content has gone away, and I'm sure none of the store stuff, so it's gonna keep blooming up the game's file size more and more and more. I mean, obviously there's gonna be ways to get probably, you know, down the line, try to do some file management, which certainly Warzone and Call of Duty have done that with their games, but I hope they can find ways to do that as well for Halo Infinite, because that's one big concern, because like, yeah, initial launch, like the file size of this game, not that bad, honestly. It's like rather reasonable, but like maybe in a year down the line, two, three years down the line, is this gonna be like a 300 gigabyte game? I mean, let's we'll have to wait and see, but certainly it's something to take in consideration, and hopefully 343 can find ways to help this load time go a little bit faster. Now, were you wishing that there were more maps and content to play around the MCC already than what there is right now? Well, looks like you might have a chance to because Rejected Shotgun, if you guys don't know, very well-known YouTuber who does amazing modded content, asks on Twitter saying, a community-made Halo 3 modded map pack could breathe a lot of fresh air into the MCC, which I would totally agree. If there was like a modded map playlist, Oh my god, that would get me back to play the MCC. That's literally the only reason why I have the MCC still installed on my PC is because of modded content that's supposedly supposed to happen sometime this year with modded uh, tools and stuff like that. But Postums, community manager over here, actually replied to this saying, Give me a list and let me see what I can do on sharing the info of how to get them and or see if there is a way we can get them into the game in more official capacity. I know it's something many have expressed interest in, no promises though. So at least of passing on this information, saying like, hey, please like give us an opportunity to put some modded content into the MCC, at least for like an official capacity for people to play. That's the most difficult part about playing mod content is that like usually you have to download it and so for some reason sometimes like the other people in your lobby have to download it as well or some weird things have to happen. Like I tried doing a lot of open lobby night on the MCC when I found like this really amazing like blood gold tree make and I was like in Halo 3 I was like oh my god yes my favorite map and my favorite game this is going to be incredible and I tried streaming it and it just didn't work out. So if there's some way to do it in an official capacity like a modded version of like Blood Gulch and Halo 3. Uh, well, hell freaking yeah. Of course, this is a developing story and I'll share more info on the channel right here if we get some concrete information. Now we might be seeing some changes to the HDS settings here pretty soon guys. Face It, who is the company that's kind of putting on like the online tournaments for the non-partner team kind of stuff, the open bracket stuff. Well, they said, attention all Halo Pro series players. We will be sending out a survey to all competitors that have played so far. This is your chance to provide feedback to HCS on weapons and equipment. And the survey will close on February 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I have not tried to play in any of these tournaments, uh, though I did get in contact with a couple players out there and they stated that, yeah, most of this stuff was talking about like weapons and equipment, kind of like what they mentioned right there. And they mentioned like literally every weapon, every bit of equipment, basically the sandbox that's in these maps that asks like, do you like it? Do you not like it? What would you like to see change and things like that? And uh, the per people I've talked to, they all like all said, I made sure to mention the Mangler because <laughs> that's definitely the hot topic right now is that should the Mangler get nerfed? And I don't really want to see the damage of the Mangler get nerfed. What I would like to see though is definitely like a lower count in the ammo types that they have as well as maybe changing the spawning to be like a secondary power weapon along with like the heat wave shotgun kind of spawning with it. Because the Mangler certainly deserves a spot within the sandbox, I just really hope that they find a good spot for it. 
rather than just nerfing it completely and just making it useless because I would hate to see that happen. Another map you might start seeing changes happen to is the map Bazaar, which has never really been like that well liked. Like it's an alright map, uh, but we see Ace here saying make Behemoth smaller when it comes to the recent change with Behemoth being removed out of the ranked modes right here. Remove a few spawns, three caps to win. Like I totally agree with that when it comes to those changes for Behemoth if you want to keep that map in there. I feel like there's an opportunity for Behemoth to stay in the competitive ranked settings, but uh, right now as it sits, definitely not. But he also mentions change up weapons and nades on Bazaar. Someone listened, and you know who listened? The multiplayer lead for Halo Infinite said, change up weapons and grenades on Bazaar. What are your thoughts on this? Now, they didn't continue on this conversation within this thread, so I'm most likely they probably took it within the direct messages, but this is like, obviously this is just like something I saw online, but like developer was like, hey, something needs to change, let me know. But this is kind of like how these conversations start when it comes to nerfing, buffing, and changing things within the game. This is how the conversation of the Mangler first started out as well, just tweets of people saying like, hey, I'm thinking this kind of needs to change and providing feedback. And that's kind of what we've been doing for Halo Infinite and we'll see what happens with it. Again, no guarantees things will change anytime soon. Definitely not before Anaheim, but uh, just keep this in mind. And if anything changes for sure, guys, I'll let you guys know all on the channel right here. Continue on the topic of HCS, we have a preview of what the optic coating looks like. This is a leak from Halo Infinite Leaks, and you can see what kind of like the coating looks like it has the green, but mostly black. This is a little different than we had for Halo 5, where that coating was definitely a lot of the white and the green and the black, but this seems to be very heavily toned on the blacks and grays, a little bit of gray mixed in there as well, uh, with a little bit of green, probably the helmet being green and everything else being kind of like a, a grayish kind of color, but of course we'll just have to wait and see. We also just had the Anaheim qualifiers just wrap up guys, and also we had a chance to see that this was Formal's last game as a center. Like guys do not know, Royal 2, who has been traditionally on this roster here, part of Sentinels, has been banned since December because he was caught geo-filtering with his router. I think that's more unintentional for sure because he definitely doesn't need any help when it comes to skill, that's for sure. But uh, this is kind of sad to see him go from the team. He's been doing great as a fill-in and we'll to see what happens. So Formal did actually try to join up with Space Station Gaming. Of course, in the last minute, Sentinels asked him to join and then he did. So it kind of screwed over Space Station Gaming right there. So. And that might have hurt his reputation to see like how dedicated of a player he will be if he will go to a different roster. Possibly, we just have to wait and see. I know a lot of the partner teams have got their rosters all set up. Faces finally has their roster set up, ready to go. He might be just kind of in it for the fun, see what happens, but we'll just have to wait and see what's going on with Formal moving forward. But he's a beast of a player, like a top 25, I think, right now when it comes to the ranks of matchmaking. So. Something could happen, we don't know. And talking about those Anaheim qualifiers, guys, we had one just last night for week four finals, and guess who won? Cloud9, big surprise, but you know what finished in second place? Speak of the devil, Sentinels as well. So that was kind of a nice little mix up right there. Base finished third with Optic fourth, E United, Xset, G2 Esports, and Space Station Gaming in the top eight, rounding that whole thing off. You can kind of see where it all kind of lined up right here when it comes to the brackets and the prize pool money right here. So Cloud9, continuing on their dominance nothing's gonna be stopping them anytime soon and uh this is like they're just like they're a force to be reckoned with you can't stop cloud nine and i think they're the absolute favorites to move into the anaheim event uh nothing's really been shaking up a whole lot since then when it comes to Cloud9 being able to complete compete with these teams. Uh, we've seen some kind of back and forth, especially with Sentinel, Optic, FaZe, E United. Like those four teams are really been kind of mixing up when it comes to anywhere from six to second place. So, of course, any one of these teams in this top eight list here could really just pop off and pull off a win. But Cloud9 it has been really dominating, but we're really looking forward to this Anaheim event. And I'll definitely will be reporting the Anaheim event when it does go live. But if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm going to link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.